privilege to be here with you all this morning. My name's Stacey. Um, I'm going to get to a little bit of my story in just a little bit, but before I do that, I just want to say how amazing it is to get to be here at Highlands this morning. Honestly, I know you probably don't know this, but I have heard about Highlands ever since I got back in the country a year ago. Um, people were saying, have you heard about what's happening in Toowoomba? And I'm like, Toowoomba? And they're like, yeah, Toowoomba. <laughs> so I've heard about you guys and the family here and the leadership team here for over a year, and it's just so exciting what God is obviously doing here um, in this beautiful town. So I had a lovely drive up yesterday. You guys are closer to heaven than we are down on Tweed and Gold Coast because I mean, my Hyundai almost didn't make it up that hill. I tell you what, you guys are close to heaven up here. So I want to honour, obviously, your leadership team. They are amazing and they're allowing God to move through them in mighty ways. So why don't we put our hands together and thank Pastor Ken, Pastor Doug, Moira, Pastor Ben and the team. Amazing. You guys really, do you know how blessed you are here? Like you have literally the A team of leadership of pastors. So you are very, very, very blessed. Um, I actually owe a big thanks to, to Ben Thompson, who obviously leads youth here because he invited me um, to hang out with his team when they were down on Tweed, on the Tweed Coast a year ago. And then they were like, hey, we're going to this conference. You want to come? And I was like, yeah, but I don't have a ticket. They're like, it's all right, we'll get you in. So they literally formed this like holy huddle around me. And I just like snuck my way into this conference, right? Like as a Christian, I snuck my way into the INC conference. And to this day, I haven't paid that debt to Sue Ellen. But I snuck in and it was here at this conference, at the INC conference last year, that I bumped into my my now pastor's Pastor Locke and Tara, and they invited me along to church and said, come and check it out. So I owe that thanks to Ben, because had he not snuck me into the conference, I wouldn't have bumped into Locke and Tara, and I wouldn't be at Elevation today. So a 12-month history that I have with you guys um, here at Highlands. So I'm pumped to get to preach the Word of God this morning. I'm very honoured, very humbled to do so. Um, so what I want to do is I want to start in prayer because I am not funny enough or smart enough to keep you entertained for the next 30 minutes. So I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit um, to speak something of value to you this morning. And in order to do that, I would love it if you would come in a posture of surrender just like me this morning. And so I want to ask if you're comfortable that you would just open your hands, palms up like this and just rest them on your legs. And I'm just going to pray for us. Father, we come to you this morning here at church in a posture of surrender. That what an honor it is to get to be the family of God this morning. What an honor it is that you would come and that you would speak to your kids today. So I'm just asking that you would speak through me, that you would just take over my mouth, take over my mind, and speak something of eternal weight and value to your people who are gathered here today. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're continuing a series called Fruit Picking this morning. And I'm sorry, Doug and Cam, but I'm going to go a little rogue. I haven't even told them this yet, but I'm going to go a little rogue. And here's why I'm going to do that. Because as soon as I heard about this topic, a word dropped in my spirit, which is what I want to talk about today. So it's a little bit different from a different perspective of what's been spoken about already in regards to fruit picking. But I want to talk about fruit picking today from the perspective of it's not so much picking from love, joy, peace, patience. But what I'm talking about is picking in regards to whether we focus on the fruit or the roots. Everybody say fruit. Fruit. Everybody say roots. Fruit and the roots. So that's what I'm talking about today. And the title of my message is this, A Revival of the Roots. A Revival of the Roots. So what do I mean when I say fruit? I'm not talking about today what Galatians 5.22 says where it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I'm not talking about that. When I say fruit today, I mean the appearance of one's life. I mean what's happening on the external level of your life. I'm talking about what is obvious to other people around you, the appearance of your life. So when I say fruit, that's what I'm getting at today. And when I say roots, what's happening on the roots level, I'm talking about what's happening underneath the surface of your life what God is very aware of. And I think it's very interesting that we live in a place where the world is so obsessed with what's happening on the fruit level of our lives, right? The world is so obsessed with what car we drive, what clothes we wear, what type of house we live in, the projection of our life. That's what the world is obsessed with. But yet we see in Scripture that that's not what God is obsessed with. In uh, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7, it says this, that God says this to Samuel. He says, For the Lord sees not as man sees. 
Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. The Lord doesn't look at the fruit of our lives, what we're projecting to the world. The, the Lord looks at the roots, what's under the surface. And in Matthew chapter 23, over in the New Testament, Jesus makes the same point where he literally rebukes the religious elite of the day for having a different um, version of themselves outside and a different version on the inside. This is what he says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 25. He says, Woe to you, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside also may be clean. And he goes on to say, Woe to you, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. So what I want to talk about today is the revival of the roots, that we wouldn't be like these religious elite back in Jesus' day who only put on a good show, but inwardly there is something amiss. Inwardly, we're not the same person on the inside as we are on the outside, so a revival of the roots. And in order to do that, I want to start off by talking about my story. I know you've got Michelle coming next week, and she's going to be an expert, but this is not a master class from me this morning. This is a mistake class, okay? This is what I've done, and please don't do this. So my story starts out in New Zealand. Anybody else born in New Zealand? Oh, there's a few of us. Awesome. Well, I was born in Auckland, New Zealand, and I lived there until I was 14. Um, and then at the age of 14, my family and I relocated to the Gold Coast, and they enrolled me at this, this Christian school, and I started attending youth ministry with all my new friends. Now, this first night that I went to youth ministry, I heard the gospel for the very first time. I heard the name of Jesus for the very first time. And it was something in my soul like a Rubik's Cube that just clicked it just made sense. When I heard the gospel, my soul just resonated with it. And from that moment, I went from zero to 100 really quick. Freaked my parents out, okay? They thought I was being brainwashed. They banned me from going to church and all that jazz. But yet I'm still here today, so it's awesome. God makes all things work together for good. And then at the age of 19, I actually became the youth pastor at this church that I'd gotten saved at. Again, heart attack for my parents. But I said yes, and I jumped into full-time ministry, and I, I did that. I was a youth pastor for four years. Now, at the age of 23, God spoke to me, not audibly, but very clearly in my soul one night when he said, I've called you to do ministry in the United States. Now, I don't know about you guys in Toowoomba, but me down on the Gold Coast, I had zero desire to go to America, like zero. To me, it was just like the bigger, badder, dirtier version of the Gold Coast, right? Like I just did not want to go there. But when God said this, something just lit up in my spirit and I knew God had just revealed to me the very next chapter of my life. So I applied as an intern at a mega church because you've got to aim high, right? So I was like, I'm aiming as high as I possibly can. So I applied as an intern at this church called New Spring Church, which is over in um, South Carolina. And they were like, yeah, come on over. Like, we'd love to have you. So I was like, do they know I led a ministry of like 30 kids? All right, I'm in. So I went from like 30 students, to, like 30,000 people on a Sunday. Like, it was extreme. And then a few months into being an intern, they actually offered me a full-time job on this youth ministry team, which honestly was my dream job. Ever since I'd become a Christian, I dreamed of some things that I wanted to do in ministry. And here I was, I'd been given this opportunity to do it at the age of 23. So all my dreams came true. I started dating this tall, dark, handsome dude. Didn't work out, no ring on my finger. But it was a good time nonetheless, okay? So all my dreams came true at the age of 23, but somehow something was going wrong in my soul. That I had my dream job. I was working in this mega church, dating this great guy, and yet something wasn't right on the inside. But yet on the outside, I'd had, I had the best life. Man, my Instagram followers were going up. I had some really good opportunities to preach in front of thousands of people. I had the best friends. I got to do all this adventure in America. On the outside, the fruit of my life said, yes, yeah, she's great. But at the root level, man, I knew something was amiss. I knew something was going on. And here's what I recognize has happened in that time. I became a professional in the, ch in the church and an amateur in Christ. That I focus all of my attention on the fruit level the appearance of my life, what people thought about me, to the neglect of what was happening down at the roots. 
My desire for fruitfulness had turned into fakeness and now I was caught in keeping up appearances. I remember having a conversation with my boss who was one of my really good friends and I said, I can't preach anymore. Now catch this, my dream job was part of that was preaching to about 5,000 students on a Wednesday night. That was part of my job and I said to him, I can't do it anymore. I can't reconcile what's happening on the inside with this life I'm apparently living on the outside. Something's not right. And I couldn't put words to it at the time. And he said, that's fine. You can still stay here. You don't have to preach. It's all good. So I kind of did this dream job without the preaching aspect of it. And a couple of years later, God actually ended up calling me back to Australia. Now, I was still living my dream. I was still loving it. So I was totally thrown by him calling me back to the Gold Coast because I said, I'd never go back there. I'd maybe go to Sydney or to Woomba, but I just did not want to go back to the Gold Coast, right? Anyways, God said, you're going back to the Gold Coast. So last year, Easter last year, 2018, I arrived back on the Gold Coast. And that began a really hard season for me because God literally pruned away every um, external part of my life and just left me the roots, right? He took away my job. He took away my title, my position, my friends, my church. Everything that I had said, this is what my life is about, he pruned that all back. And I was left with some straggly little roots, right? Living in my parents' basement as a 28-year-old, single, okay? So I'd never hit a low like that low, Easter 2018. And I was forced to reconcile with the reality of what was happening on the root level of my life because I had nothing else. I came face to face with what was happening on the inside of my life because I had nothing on the outside going for me anymore. And I wonder if here this morning, Highlands, if maybe there are some of us who are here today and you find yourself stuck in this trap where you're like, I don't know what it is, I can't put words to it, but yet my outside life, my projected life, doesn't line up with my internal life. That I come to church and I act the part and I love being in church, but man, on Mondays, I don't really care for God all that much. Or maybe you go to a small group and your small group think that you're great, but yet on the inside, you know that you're holding back a lot of information from your small group. Or your best friends, they're like, yeah, he's great, she's great. But yet when you hang out with them, you're like, oh, I just wish I could tell them this. Or social media, man, for the younger generation, we project a certain image of ourselves and that's not who we truly are on the inside. So I fully believe that maybe there are some people here and there is a wrestle every single day between this projected version of yourself and this actual version. And let me tell you that God is out to close the gap on that. That that is not healthy living. That is not the abundant life that he has called us to live. I ended up being so shriveled up and so starved as a Christian because my projected version wasn't my actual version. And God went to extreme measures to make sure that those two things were reconciled. So this morning, what I want to do in our our last moments together is I just want to share two things about how we can go on a journey of health from our roots all the way to our fruits, right? That everywhere in between, we are healthy, we are vibrant, we are living the life that God has called us to live. So point number one this morning is this. God's job is the fruit. Everyone say fruit. Our job are the roots. Everyone say roots. God's job is the fruit. Our job are the roots. My mum is an an amazing lady. She recently, a couple of years ago, quit her job at the hospital and went as a full-time bonsai technician. Does anybody here know what a bonsai is? Okay, five of us. Okay, so my mum does this as a full-time gig, right? She works with miniature trees. And she is amazing at it. Like, people pay her mega bucks to fix their little treats. I'm like, are you serious? But people love this stuff, okay? So she's just like raking in the dough because people love it and she is good at it. Anyways, I didn't inherit her green thumb at all. At all. It's not like I, I kill trees. I do worse things. So what happened a couple of years ago, a friend gave me a a beautiful desk like as a present and on this desk was this beautiful little succulent and I was really excited about this succulent, right? I was super excited. I can't have a dog in the house that I'm renting, can't have a cat. I hate fish, hate birds. So I was like, this succulent, I'm going to take really good care of it. So every day I'm watering this thing. I'm like, I'm like, you see where this is going? I'm like dusting this thing. I'm putting it in the sun when the sun's out of my bedroom. Two months into this routine of lovingly caring for this beautiful succulent, which still looks immaculate, Still perfect looking. 
I was like, oh, I watered it one day and the water kind of filled up too much to the top. So I was like, I guess I'll like tip some of the water out of my rubbish bin. So I like tipped up this tree in the rubbish bin and I was like, okay, well, there's a little tag underneath it. I would love to know what type of species my new friend is. So I look at this little tag and it did tell me what species it was. It said it is a fake succulent. So for two months, I'd been watering a plastic plant thinking I was doing a really good job at it. Yeah. So that's about as good as I get at botany, but my mum, on the other hand, is really, really, really good at it. This week, she had this, this guy drop off a tree to her house, and she showed me, I'm sitting outside with her, and she's like, people just don't know how to take care of their trees. And she's like, look at this, Stacey, and she starts pushing the tree, and it's like swaying in its pot. And it looks fine to me, it's green, it looks like a tree, right? And she's like, Look at the soil. The soil is so unhealthy. People don't take care of what's happening under the surface. They just look at what's happening on top of the surface. And I thought, man, isn't that what we do in life? We just look at ourselves and think, you know what? I'm going to church. I'm, I've got the family. I've got the house. I've got the job. Everything's sweet. But yet, under the surface, maybe there are some really unhealthy things that we just don't address. Because we live in this world that's obsessed with what's happening on the outside, but yet God is obsessed with what's happening on the inside. And so for us, we need to go on this journey of understanding that God's job is the fruit, the appearance of our life, the opportunities we get, the reputation we have. We need to leave that up to God. He says, cultivate a soil that I can then throw my seeds on and grow a really healthy plant into. I think this is what... Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 is getting at when it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul doesn't say, but the fruit of the Christian. He doesn't say, but the fruit of those who go to highlands are love, joy. He says the fruit of the Spirit. God is saying, I'll do that. I will do that in your life. I will produce love in your life. I will produce joy in your life. I will produce self-control in your life. Take care of the soil, cultivate an environment where I can come and throw these seeds onto and I will take care of the fruit. So Christians, don't worry about what's happening on the external level of your life. Be obsessed with what's happening on the inside because that's what where God has called us to focus on. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. I love this proverb. He says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Isn't that amazing? And hey, the good news is if we focus on what's happening on the roots, fruits will come. They will come. But someone like me, I'd focus all on the external appearances and my roots shriveled up. I remember coming back to the Gold Coast and having no idea what God wanted me to do. And I remember laying on my bed one night, like, should I be a getaway host? Because that's always been a dream of mine. Should I go back to university? Like, should I take care of my 92-year-old granddad? Like, God, what have you called me to do? And I remember the Holy Spirit saying to me very clearly inside my soul, he said, Stacy, I haven't called you to stop preaching. I've called you to stop performing. <laughs> yes, sir, I hear that, roger that, amen. It was like a Holy Spirit slap in the face, right? Him saying, take care of what's happening under the surface of your life and I'll make sure all the fruit's there. I'll make sure it's all okay. God's job is the fruit. Highlands, our job are the roots, to keep our heart with all vigilance. Bless you. <laughs> so how do we do this? How do we trust God with the fruit and we are called to focus on the roots? What does that look like practically? I believe it looks like this. Point number two this morning is how will we abide through intimacy? Everybody say abide. Abide. Now, this is the word that God dropped on my spirit when I heard this series was fruit picking. I want to read to you out of John chapter 15, starting in verse 4. Jesus says this, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Catch the silence. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So if we want fruitfulness on the outside, we are called to abide in Christ and intimacy. 
That is our high calling. I love how the Passion Translation says that. It says this, So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. Isn't that amazing? goes on to say that I am, I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. This is what we've been called to do, to abide in Christ through intimacy with Christ. It doesn't just mean that we receive salvation from him and then get on with our lives. No, it means... Every day, he is that life-giving sap that is to flow into our lungs, flow into our souls, flow into our lives, that we cannot live without it. And somewhere along the way, my life had become severed from that source of my life. And my life started to dry up, started to shrivel up. So a revival of the roots starts when we abide in Christ through intimacy. I love what author and pastor John Piper says about abiding. He says this, it is trusting in Jesus, remaining in fellowship with Jesus, connecting to Jesus, so that all that God is for us in Him is flowing like a life-giving sap into our lives. That's number one. Abiding is believing, trusting, savoring, resting, receiving. That is what we have been called to do. You know, in ancient Bible times, a, a tribe or a family or a community would literally set up camp around a water source. They knew their life depended on it. So they would find a well and they would set up camp around that well or they would dig a well. That is such a perfect picture of what we have been called to do here at Highlands, of what we have been called to do with our families with our small groups, that we would set up camp around the living water of Jesus Christ and we would not move away from it. That is what our life depends upon. So we need to set up camp around this living water. And when we do that, when we abide in Christ through intimacy, our lives will get rich. They will get rich. And my life in America looked rich on the outside and inside I knew I was spiritually bankrupt. And so, like I said, God pruned everything back from my life and brought me back here. And I had this one encounter, which I want to I tell you about this morning, which changed everything for me. Um, I was in my bedroom and I was going through a really hard time, you know, anxiety attacks and all that, freaking out that God had pruned me back. And I was like, I'm not going to survive. I just had like these little dangly like roots. I was like, I'm going to die. And so I was having this very dramatic moment with God one day in my bedroom and I just thought, you know, I'm going to have to play praise music and just praise my way out of this moment right here. So I played Hillsong as you do and I started like dancing around my room. Does anybody else dance like in private? Okay, good. There's a few of us. I do not want people to see what I was doing in my bedroom that night praising the Lord. Okay, like there were some pirouettes and jetties and whatever else they're called. I was just going for it. And I was doing this for a couple of minutes and this thing happened to me and it doesn't happen, things like this don't happen to me. Some of you have crazy experiences like this and I'm jealous, but they don't happen to me all that much. So I was dancing around my room and this moment happened where it felt like uh, heaven began peering into the basement. Super strange, it stopped me in my tracks. I felt like angels were looking into the basement from above me. Stopped me in my tracks and I was like, what do I do? Like, do I keep dancing? Because now I have spectators. Like, what am I supposed to do? Anyways, I kept dancing, but more like awkwardly because I knew I was being watched. So I was just like, oh, this is awkward. A couple minutes later, I sensed the presence, the spirit of Jesus walk into my room. So my back's turned to the door and I felt the spirit of Jesus just walk into my room. He walked across my rug, my spotlight rug, and then he took a seat on my Amart couch. Now, Bible college did not prepare me for this moment. What was I supposed to do? So I was racking my brain. I was like, I don't know what to do. So I knelt down in front of where this presence of Jesus was sitting on my couch, and I just kissed the space where his feet were. And it was the most surreal, intimate moment I've ever had with Jesus. It only lasted a couple of minutes, and then eventually the Spirit of God just walked out of my room, and I was left like flabbergasted, like, what? just happens. But in that moment, I recognized that I would trade every bit of appearance of health 
every bit of fruit in my life for one moment at the root level of my life like that with Jesus. That we are called to abide in intimacy with Christ and nothing else this world has will ever be able to come close to a moment like that. And that's what he has made available to us. So a revival of the roots must start by abiding in intimacy with Christ. I believe, Highlands, just as we finish up this morning, I believe that we are called to trade our striving and our proving and our earning and our keeping up appearances for the real deal. We are called to close the gap on the projected version of ourselves and just be who we really are in a moment that our fruits and our roots would all line up and we would be one whole person in Christ. I love what the book of Isaiah says in Isaiah 41, verse 18, it says this. And this is a promise from God to me. And this is a promise from God to you. He says this, I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. What an amazing promise for us this morning that I believe here in Toowoomba and here at Highlands that life is flowing back into our veins. That in Toowoomba, maybe a place that's been steeped in religion that God is saying, I am sending a rushing mighty river and it's gonna wash through the souls of people. It's gonna wash through churches. It's gonna wash away this religious spirit and we are gonna be who God's called us to be on every level of our lives, every single level. We're called to trade up. We're called to trade in our striving for our abiding. I love what Pastor Ray Ortland says. He says, what is more important than our personal reality with the living God? What is more important? I have found what is the most important thing to me and that is me abiding in Christ and nothing can compete with that. So what is it for you Highlands? What is it for you? What is it gonna take for God to bring a revival to your roots in your life, to the hidden places of your life? What's it gonna take? Maybe some pruning or maybe just some more uh, prioritising His presence. Maybe He doesn't need to prune your life like He did to me, but what if maybe you just made space for the presence of God every single day and said, make me on the inside who I so desperately want to be on the outside. We need to trust God with the fruit as we take care of the roots. So what I want to do is I just want to finish in prayer and I want us to finish as we started this morning, if that's okay with everybody. I just want us to finish with our palms up and surrender to God. Because I can't tell you what this message means for you, but I trust the Holy Spirit can. So with your palms face up to God, why don't you just have those on, rested on your legs and I'll pray. Father God, I believe that you want to bring a revival to our roots to the inner hidden places of our lives, that you wanna close the gap on the projected version and the real version of us. Father, I pray that here this morning that life and vitality would flow all the way up from those living wells of the Holy Spirit and flood the lives of your children here this morning. Father, bring health, bring life, bring vitality back to us on every single level. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I felt as I was preparing this message that there was someone here who's having a hard time with your walk with Christ and that you're not sure if you're even alive in God anymore. Maybe you're thinking that God has left you. Well, God was talking to me about you this week and I want you to know that He told me to tell you to just stay. You feel like there is no life left in you and God wants you to know that you just are called to stay. And I got this picture of what my mum does when she thinks a bonsai is dead. It looks dead, it feels dead, it's all dried up. But you know what? If she scratches the bark of that tree and it reveals green life, she knows that tree is still alive. So if you're here this morning, you feel like God's left you, you feel like you're dead in God, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit has done a scratch test on you and He says there's life in you yet. So I bless you with that this morning. I leave that with you, that there is life in you yet, that God is resurrecting something powerful and something beautiful in you. With every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe there's someone here this morning and you don't know Jesus for yourself personally. Maybe you've heard about Him or you've been going to church for a while, but you've never entered into that personal relationship with Him. This morning, He's extending that invite to you. 
I would love to be able to pray for you. So if that's you and you want to say, yeah, I want to step into that relationship with Jesus, I would just love for you to put your hand up so I can see it and then you can put it straight back down. Amazing. Praise God. Well, for those couple of people who raised their hand, I just want you to say just silently to yourself inside of your, inside of your heart, just say, Jesus, I give you my life. And Father, I pray over these brave souls who just raised their hand, just made the most amazing decision to follow You. I know that Your Word says that when we entrust ourselves to You, that You are faithful to never let us go. So I pray that You would reveal to these men what it means to be a follower of Jesus, that You would pour out Your love on them. They would be all consumed with what it means to be a follower of Jesus. We love You and we thank You this morning for Your precious Word. It's in Jesus' name we pray.